Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to thank Chairman Thompson for having today's hearing. I uh, appreciate Governor Nome and our uh, members of the China Select Committee being here this morning, and thank uh, the three of you for all your time this afternoon as well. I represent the Big First District of Kansas, uh, which is in uh, some now in eastern, mostly in central and western Kansas. We are the uh, number one producer of beef in the country, number one wheat, number one sorghum, host of other ag products as well. And we see every side of the uh, supply chain uh, in, in the Big First District of Kansas. We also know in in Kansas that food security is national security. And I tell people all the time and to remind the committee, you know, we are the free country we are for a host of reasons, one of which is the fact that we've never had to rely on another country for our food supply, um, which is why the work of this committee is so incredibly important. Um, this hearing's highlighted the negative impact that foreign adversaries like China can have on that food and, ag and agriculture chain, and I share those concerns including ownership of, of large tracts of farmland near our military installations. Any threat to our country has to be taken very seriously. Um, I'm chairman of the um, subcommittee on livestock, dairy, and poultry, and, and I would like to draw special attention to China's questionable ambitions with our country's livestock assets. China has made it clear that it desires America's protein products and is making substantial investments in both securing our protein and in emulating America's livestock genetics overseas. Um, question for you, Mr. Daly. Um, given China's track record of intellectual property theft, could China also be conducting espionage operations to acquire the very livestock genetics that American ranchers have spent decades developing rather than researching it and developing it themselves? And if so, what, ought what, what should we be thinking about in Congress um, to do about that? That's an excellent question, Congressman, and, and thank you for it. Um, I absolutely do think this is something that China would do. Um, uh, there's a reason why the, uh, the Committee on Foreign Investment, uh, one of the national security priorities was U.S. biological information, U.S. person biological information. And if that's something uh, China is uh, gathering for its intelligence, it's certainly uh, because food security uh, for China is imperative to, uh, to their survival. It's certainly something they're going to do. In terms of how we guard against it, uh, you know, uh, I think just being vigilant on seeing where they're putting their resources and, and where they're trying to steal that, tech, that, that information. Yeah, I, I agree. And I appreciate what you said, Ambassador Tom. You know, agriculture is very trusting. You know, our family farms, I can't imagine, you know, taking a piece of bailing wire from my neighbor, uh, much less stealing somebody's intellectual property, right? Um, that's just how we operate. But we cannot forget that that's not um, what we see from other actors uh, in the global markets that we participate in. Uh, trade is key. And we've got to continue to foster non-Chinese uh, markets to add resiliency, um, I believe, to the global export markets for our ag, our ag producers. You know, MAP and FMD, Market Access Program and Foreign Market Development, critical components to that. I've been an advocate of seeing us work towards doubling dollars we're spending on MAP and, and FMD. Question for you, uh, Mr. Gackle. Um, how can programs like MAP and FMD, in your view, help develop trade relationships with American allies and grow ag exports, partic particularly at a time when China remains such a large threat and when the Biden administration has not been pursuing new free trade agreements. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I'll start by saying that there is a strong track record and history of how those programs have worked in the past and the relationships that we've been able to build. Um, 112 markets across the country, I think is what I mentioned earlier in my uh, both written and oral testimony. Um, and the return on investment, I've said this before too, but just to make the point again, these are not just MAP and FMD, federal government dollars, taxpayer dollars. These are also farmer invested dollars through our checkoff programs, um, whether it's soybeans or other commodity groups. So farmers are demonstrating their uh, willingness to participate in these programs by investing their own dollars. And we're seeing a tremendous return on those checkoff dollars when it comes back to the farm and return on investment there. So again, we have a history of showing how those relationships are built and you know that takes time to build those relationships and establish them and we just want to continue to be a reliable partner with those markets that we're working in. Yeah, incredibly important as we think about how we counter, counteract China. And, and lastly for you, Ambassador Tom, I know we don't have much time here, um, but you know we, we've seen China's domestic ag production grow um, certainly 530% um, since year 2000. How does China's increase in ag production impact our ag and food security in our country? 
Well, obviously, it displaces our market, right? I mean, I think we've seen nearly a 500-some percent increase in productivity across China over the past decade. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, comes from a lot of U.S. innovation that's been stolen from us. So we've lost that competitive edge. Now, I have no reason to believe that they won't continue to grow at a very rapid rate now since they've got uh, a lot of our technology already, whether it's the digital side or whether it's the intellectual property on the genetic side or on the chemistry side. They're going to continue to grow that. So, again, Xi Jinping wants to be a food secure nation, to feed his 1.4 billion people, and we need to be prepared to do what we can to grow our trade around the world. I want to say one final thing the BRICS, when Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin walked out of the Kremlin a year ago in January, they said, Who would have thought we would have had control of the world so quickly? Hmm. Going our direction. I think we need to take notice because the BRICS are trying to supplant the United States and we're not aware of everything that's going on there. Wholeheartedly agree. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.